Greetings everyone, my name is Altarian and welcome back to probably the final episode because I guess in the next morning we're gonna go to the castle. Let's see what will happen. A bold move perhaps, but sometimes when his words fail us, it is best to take matters in our own hands. I love you Saito, saying it comes so easily, but showing you is something else altogether. I hope that as our mouths were connected in the truths of passion, he knew everything I wanted to say. As our lips parted, this was my only wish. Why did you... Shh, don't ask. But... He attempted to gather his breath and re-attempt his question, but he felt sad. A long silence, mind, that I expected. Though our pause of conversation, my cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Throughout our pause of conversation, my cheeks were still flushed with color. So I took his hand once more. Why don't we go to bed? Oh. Uh. Our hands were still entwined. Saito's cheeks were red, and I led him to the futon to which he carefully made himself snug. I saw a playful grin curl in the corner of his lips and made me smile in return. <clears throat> Next day, Heinz the domain had sent a scouting troop to survey the area around Shin's Shirekawa castle, but contact with the troops had been quickly lost, which was an ominous sign for us all. <clears throat> Saito and I were assigned to leave for Shirekawa in order to uncover any details about her whereabouts. We had made our approach to the castle stealthily, but both of us had an eerie suspicion that something was off. How oh, strange. Not a soul within sight. From what the Aizu officials had told us, all of the Imperial Army troops were stationed within the castle, but it was conspicuously silent around the entire castle, and it was peculiar, peculiar to think that there was no activity in or around the castle when we arrived. As we expected, there was no sign of the scouting team, which were worried, which was worrisome, to say the least. Just then, a rustle on the brushes startled us. Saito immediately glasp, clasped his hands around the hilt of his blade, drawing his attention to the rustling brush. Yukimura, Yukimura behind me. Okay. I hid behind Saito as he directed. He held in a deep breath, channeling all of his focus to listen to a sign of what the sound could be. I love his eyes. It's not an animal. The footsteps came from a man, two or three, I believe. If the scouts would have been scouts would have sent word if they made it to the castle safely by now. Which can only mean Saito's grip upon the sword tightened apprehensively. Wherever those footsteps were coming from, they were stepping closer to us. Without a second thought, Saito unsheathed his sword and swung fiercely at the approaching stranger. However, <coughs> the stranger reflexively repaired Saito's blade, which must have meant their expected arrival. The hairs on the back of my neck stood in the moonlight, cut through the thick layer of rock, fog, exposing the stranger. It was. <coughs> God damn it! Didn't your Imperial bastards would be so damn tough? What? Huh? Saito? Saito? Nagakura! As soon as Saito realized he'd attempted to strike at Nagakura, he shitted the sword. Shinpachi, it's you. What are you doing here? That's the same thing. I'm going to get hit. Dude, right back at you. What the hell are you doing attacking people without looking? Jeez, man. I always gotta watch your neck around you. Nagakura, what are you doing here? Huh? Hey, Shinpachi. Hey, Shinpachi. Who the hell are you talking to? The voice, it was... Saito, why are you in this place? Saito, they're really you. What are you doing here? Harada, you're here too. What are you doing here? What is the meaning of your business here? Explain. No, 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 no. Since I've been to Tataka, I've been to Sanato, I've been to Aizu. So here, here is out, yo. 
I came with Sono to Aizu to fight against the Imperial Army. Oh, they fought the Rasets Taiga Irodaro. I saw no Sugato Mikagara. Oh, Kagata Kitatuaga. Remember those furies we fought in Kofu? We saw them, so we followed them out here. Tari de Atari or Mihate Tandaga. Rasets Taino Renchinga Shirakao Joni Hite Kunoga Mieta. We're doing some reconnaissance when we saw some of the fury corps entering Shirakawa Castle. Shirakajo Amo Rasets Domo no Suni Natchima Termite. Seems like the Shirakawa Castle already became the hornet nest of the Furies out there. What? If there are Furies here, especially of a ravenous variety with singing tofu, Kofu, then so was my father. And just then. There those bastards. Are. More footsteps. This time, four or five of them. Saito reached for the hilt of his katana. Nice, ready for battle. So did Nagakur and Harada. All of them were ready to move at the drop of a hat. Suddenly, shadows slid out from the corners into the path, soaring as such a lofty height was far beyond the capabilities of a human jump. Furies have arrived. Time to feed them. To my spear, the furious charges with katanas that were solely lacking in range compared to Harada's spear, which had been twirling with glee. Harada reflexively thrust his spear into the chest of the incoming fury, and act followed by the eerie sound of mangled bones and blood spattering from the ground. <laughs> ah, just a little bit off. Harada's aim, it seemed, had just barely missed the fury's heart. Which meant that his wound would seal itself soon as if nothing happened at all. <laughs> Off to the side, Nagakura thrashed his sword wildly to the crown of the Furies, hoping to sneak a swipe in. Damn it! Ah, fighting these guys chip in in the ass. Nailing them in the heart is impossible. <laughs> Even if you go get him, they don't bleed out because they just heal before you get hidden. In spite of this outburst, Nagakura had a small, sly grin on his face. After dodging the path of an incoming enemy sword, Nagakura viciously swiped at the Fury's unguarded arm, and a hiss of flesh spritzed cracked in my ear. Saito caught his act in his perif. Saito caught his act in his peripherals. Such a wasteful British display. Unlike Nagakura's frenzy technique, Saito moved with finesse, striking at each of the Fury's vital points before the bodies piled on top one of another. The desperate cacophonous shrieks of the dying Furies echoed brutishly through the forest. Despite their enhanced speed and strength, the Fury still suffered from amateurish swordsmanship. There were no match against the skilled precision demonstration of Saito, Nagakura, and Harada. Alright. Looks like we took care of him now, eh? Good thing there weren't too many. <laughs> if we would have been surrounded back like in Kofu, then we would have been here for hours. Nagakura wiped the sweat, beads dripping down his frown, brow. Then an unexpected voice startled us. Uh, from underneath the pile of disembedded carcasses, one of the furies murmured a low groan. Saliva will no point letting it suffer. Wait. He has something pertinent to say. His mind may not be, not be given way to madness just yet. Saito stretched out his arm to stop Nagakura, and then he cautiously approached the Fury. The Fury struggled to catch his breath as his lungs were becoming crushed by the weight of the other bodies. Saito looked him in the eye and spoke curtly. Just now you spoke of Aizu. <laughs> Tell me everything you know. No funny business either. 
It might be a fury, but you probably know by now that you got no chance against the three of us. The soldier nodded with displeasure and began to speak. They're running experiments of furies over in the Shirakawa Castle. After one of their sessions, they told some of us that they'll kill us since we're obsolete now. When we tried to escape, we started to feel real strange. If you know what I mean. Who are you? Are you a member of the Imperial Army? The soldier shook his head languidly. We're no army men, sir. Just civilians hired by the Imperial Army. The Imperial Army started recruiting farmers and merchants to join, so I, I volunteered to serve. If I had known all these horrible things they were plotting, I would have, I would have never joined. But that mean old son of a bitch made us drink this red syrup stuff. From the soldier's description, I assumed he was speaking about my father. Every time they send us in one of those deadly battles one by one my comrades would go mad in the end when we're done for they have got no use for us hearing the sins of my father being committed made my stomach turn i was speechless ah you mentioned something about the aizu what are the demons planning to do That old man plans on moving his experiments over to the Aizu domain, since they were the ones who originally owned Shirakawa Castle. With each word spoken, the soldier's sunken face became more pale and he couldn't breathe without wincing, and something terribly strange occurred. <laughs> I don't want to die! I never thought I'd turn into a monster and lose my goddamn mind! I never anticipated this. He stretched his fingers out towards the sky, but I could swear they were turning white before our eyes. It was almost if they had been lit ablaze from inside and deteriorating at an astonishing rate. Soon, the tip of his fingers resembled the end of a burning incense, which flesh charring into crumbling ash. At the end of the display, only ash remained. What the hell just happened? His body just disappeared. Kind of strange. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this happen before. If you stabbed him in the heart or shot him with a silver bullet. Does that mean that there is even more that we don't know about the Furies? Well, let's all ask to the castle. If that's true what they said, then the warriors of Aizu are in danger, right? Warriors be damned. Warriors be damned. Wars breaking out in Aizu. I doubt that they're uh, hoping to finish whatever experiments they're working on right now to roll out those sprinkling new furies. Right. Everyone nodded in agreement, and we all readied ourselves to rush for the Shirakawa castle. Saito, however, stood firm, as if he weren't joining us. Saito, what's the matter? We need to hurry. His eyes dropped to the floor, and he began muttering to himself. <laughs> Turning our time in Kyoto and even until now, there are countless men that I have slain and killed. 
This sword here, drenched in blood. Oh, that's the it is not my place to cause judgment on their actions, especially with the want on this grace of human life. To an outsider, murder at the hands of a warrior may be no different than a dangerous experiment gone awry. At the end of it all, blood has been split needlessly. Is really fierce. However, some evils cannot be undone without another evil to destroy. It. My heart is condemned those who create furies, and as such, I promise to destroy those demons who do. Tenacious fire emerging by Saito's bright eyes. His glare alone could kill a man. After staring angrily at the ground for another moment, he finally looked up and faced me. Apologies for keeping you. Let us go. And so, the four of us approached the castle's gate, sprinting hastily through the dim, four-stead trial. Alright, I see the castle. Any, any guards? Nah. Doesn't look like it. Weird. You would think with the war going on and with all those experiments they're doing, there'd be some guards at the gate. Hmm, looks fishy to me. It may be a trap, but your surroundings carefully as we make our approach. We all nodded and stepped attentively towards the direction of the front gate. Just then, the crack of gunfire thundered beside us. We all gasped and held our breaths, thinking a nearby rifleman had spotted the movements. But... I know you're hiding over there. Hey, why don't we all. We're all friends here, eh? So why don't we stop with all those games and just show ourselves, eh? I've been eagerly awaiting our battle here for quite some time now. That voice. You're Shirano. I had a feeling you would rear your head sooner or later. Enough of the trade, show yourselves. A tall tenant demon, Shirano, had been waiting for us at the gate's opening. You're here as well, eh? Saito shot a glance at Shirano with fervent amnesia. Have you any idea what is being done inside of the castle right now? For the most part. But I've got no desire to help Kazuma at all, Kodger Kodo. Especially modern samurai or warrior. However, it would be such a waste for me to abandon this opportunity to crush you in battle too. I got that, eh? Or to go back in Tatagaru Kuraiwa. Udeo Mingai take the Kuratandarona. I sure did miss all of you so very dearly. I merely hope that you have prepared yourselves as well as I did. Else, this will become embarrassing for you. Although Shirano, your own agenda, may have been at odds with both Kazuma and my father. It seemed that he hadn't stopped him from seeking to become a nuisance for our own means. I assume this means you hope to impede our progress, even if we were to ask you to do otherwise. I suppose we shall have to force our way in then. Saito wrapped his fingers around the hilt of his sword. Before he could move, however, Nagakur interrupted. Saito! Aye, Saito! Take her and get in there, we'll handle him. Yeah, time to settle the score with this chump, once and for all. What? 
の者は鬼だぞしかも銃を持っているあんたたち二人ではか He's a demon and he's wielding a handgun The two of you cannot possibly He's right It's just the two of you against Shiro and you'll なんだよその顔俺たちの腕が信用できねえってかああ、わけですか You don't believe in us? 一緒に視線をくぐってきたってのに白状なやつだな Jeez Kinda harsh after we've survived all those close calls together, don't you think? あんたたちを信用していないわけではないだが I don't mean to express a lack of faith in you, I just なんだ戦うのはお前ら二人だけかあ、oh, really? I've only you two to play with 別に俺は構わねえぜ全員の相手をしろとは言われてねえからな I mean by all means, I don't mind I mean it's not like we're gonna take us all that long Go ahead, have all day お兄さんも構わねえって言ってるぜさっさと行けよ、サイト。Yo, hear that? The demon's giving us his permission. Get out of here, サイト。すぐにこいつを片付けて、お前らの後を追いかけるからよ。We'll handle this idiot. Just haul ass and get done what needs to be done. サイト watched his interaction unfold silently and he glanced between Nagakura and Harada. After a moment, he nodded the information. Understood. さっきに行って待っているぞ。I will see that the mission is completed. 必ず追いついてこい。いいな。But you had better follow behind me, got it? Yeah, yeah, we know. Right back at you. Don't go dying on us either. Either. Without a word, Saito turned and sprinted in. I followed behind him as fast as my legs could take me. Saito, was it really okay for us to leave the two of them behind? Neither Nagakuro or Harda had ever drunk the water of life. They were both as human as could be. And for the two of them to enter a battle with a demon, let alone. Let alone one as skilled with a gun felt so reckless. Ano Futari wa Hatasena Yaksok Nato Kuchini wa Shinai. To their credit, both of them are men of their words. Zetani Oitsi te Kitekuri Hasta. Shinpai Sruna. With utmost certainty, I know they will keep their promise, so don't worry. Saito's words were bestowed with an unbreakable trust, one that had been nurtured for years besides men with whom he had served in the Shinsegumi faithfully. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Within the castle's interior, it was hauntingly still. If the story told us by the dying fury outside of the castle was true, then there should have been a dozen of Isaac soldiers and furies awaiting us inside. Why, why is it so quiet? Didn't Nagakura say that this place was swarming with furies? I anticipated it to be one of the two options. Either our intended destination is in a distant room here or. Saito's voice tailed off as he wonderful, wondered to himself, and a chill ran down his spine. And then a startling surprise. A sliding of door was flung open, and from behind the sliding door came. <laughs> A gang of feral furies screeching to signal their arrival and they leap fervishly into the room. In response, Saito changed into his fury form. He unsheathed his swords and he weaved so angrily between the furies, my eyes would keep, barely keep up. It is swerving with their fury, but none of them speak because they're all mad. Inside of a narrow hallway, Saito opted to lunge instead of swinging his sword, piercing limbs and dis disarming his foes. For Saito, they seemed to be a labor to move through such a cramped corridor, as he had been well served in fighting in many Kyo narrow passageways. <laughs> the battle between furies meant that the serum's enhancement were leveled, only true swordsmanship could prevail. In the span of one breath, Saito made quick work of each of the Furies, killing them with grace and ease. No inspiring aspiration. An no inspiring demonstration. How adept of you to dispatch my new creations in a flash. This voice, it was. It's been so long since our last acquaintance. Have I not seen you since Kofu, was it? 
father. I do appreciate you delivering my daughter here to me. Save me quite a bit of time to find her. I have not brought her here to hand over to the likes of you. It that may be, but in the end it matters very little. The end result will be the same, wouldn't you say? But my, the water of life suits you so nicely. So how many times have you tasted your new power? Has it only been once? Or has it been many times that you've started to lose count? I owe you no answer. Oh, pardon me, how silly of me to forget to mention something from the last time we were together. Have you the faintest idea of where your glorious fury powers are derived? Saito says in the answer, give him a father cryptic tone, and he thinned his eyes in anticipation of whatever trick father might have had up his sleeve. However, the scene father was posing his question rhetorically, and his lips curled into a grin as he continued on. Furies have capabilities beyond anything a human could do. However, humans bear the gift of a long lifespan. However, these powers will not be quaved into you as some act of charity. You are merely borrowing time of your human life to activate the potent force of the fury. What? If what my father had said were true, then every time Saito activated his fury abilities, had it meant that he was sacrificing his remaining lifespan? Saito's brow furrowed slightly, as if he perplexed by the sudden revelation, but then he murmured into a composed, hushed tone. I see now. It explains why the fury outside had passed in such a strange way. The fury is outside, turning to ash without leaving a single trace of the remains behind. So that was because, when your lifespan has completely depleted, there is nothing left. There's nothing holding your body or your matter together. And that meant Saito, having already drunk the water of life, will soon suffer the same thing. <laughs> 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 ah, ah, I can see the anguish in your eyes. If you only saw how stupidified you look. Ah. Each time you harness the power of the fury, you are only edging closer and closer to your own demise. So, what do you say now? Didn't this amuse you? All that you've been fighting for has turned out that your own undoing. Hilarious, isn't it? Father began crackling to himself manically. Maniacally. Just as despair began to sink in. What makes you think that we got worked up over something like that, huh? A familiar voice called out from behind me. That voice, it was... Heisuke, what are you doing here? Hijikata san ni iwaretan da. Kokoro nokori ga arun nara. Ima no uchi ni katazuke te koi ittesa. Hijikata told me to take care of any unfinished business I've got left while I still could. Seisuke laughed lightheartedly before shifting an angrily glare at my father. So, every time we fight, we're taking days off our lives, is that it? That's supposed to scare us or what, huh? Living on borrowed time, so what? Back in the Kyoto days, we spent every day like it will be our last, living at the skin of our teeth. You know, there were even days I couldn't sleep before I went on my patrols. 
Imagine this waking, walking down the street. You never know when a Ronin came out of the shadows and get you. If we could handle that, we could handle anything. No way in hell we're gonna roll over just because we might die in the process. Ain't that right, Hajime? In response, Saito's mouth twitched into a daring smile. You're right. That was something both the Shinsengumi men were immediately familiar with, making my father attempts to cause doubt in their hearts all the more meaningless. To us, how long we've got left are just chips to gamble with, so that means... Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Okay. All we've got to do now is go all in! That's how I've done it and that's how it's gonna be! Suddenly Heisuke's hair became white. Oh yeah. In one swift movement Heisuke drew his sword and bolted rashly in my father's direction before sliding the icy sharp blade across his ribcage. <laughs> However, father was in phase as he gash, as the gash left by by Heisuke began to seal itself, and the bloody viscera stopped. I'll handle him. Go on ahead. I love this dude. As soon as I take care of the father, I'll be right behind you. Let's wipe the demons once and for all. Heisuke's words were confident and decisive. And not a hint of doubt could be found in them. Alright. I'll be waiting for you. Saito nodded, and the two shared this wordless moment. A wordless moment in which they acknowledged how much of them meant to it to the other. A token of brotherly admiration. Cute. Atop of the large staircase was an enormous grand hall. Rows of ornately decorated tables and seats were once the host of an array of teeming guests, I imagined. In the place of the daimyo chair, however, stood two tall shadowy figures. Although there were only two of them, their ghostly aura premiated the entire hall, premated the entire hall, causing my hair to raise chillingly along with the length of my arm. It was all but impossible to flinch. I had made one of the figures out to be Kyuyu Amagari, who upon recognizing me grimaced irritably. Her? Why in the world would you bring her here? Besides him stood Shikage Kazuma, staring vacantly at us. Isn't it obvious? I know this voice actor! Awesome! Obviously, this idiot has been in error of the ways and brought her to me as an offering. Great, though. When was the last time we have spoken? You know back then, you Shinsengumi dog still had a lot of bite in you. But now, <laughs> you're nigh but a group of whimpering pups. Kazuma towns were met with no reaction from Saito, who continued to glare coldly at the demon. Well, excellent work. Excellent work, our dog. But I grow impatient. Enough of this pretense, bring my bride to me. She's not here as an offering. Oh? So tell me, why is she here? To kill you. I have promised a safe travel, and I will end you. Her being here is proof enough that I'm more than capable of achieving both. Kazuma chortled in amusement from Saito's challenge. <laughs> 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 
What an abrupt proposal. Are you so delusional as to believe you could defeat me, eh? Please do not tell me that the memory of our battle in Tobafushima has escaped you so easily. Calling it pitiful would scan to justice, as I nearly squashed you like a pathetic insect under my foot. Have you forgotten that? Your paltry swordsmanship was nothing until you drank the water of life. That you survived that all is merely a demonstration of the mercy of which I am oft willing to extend. My decision to drink the serum was my own. It was one for which I have no regrets. All of the paths I could have chosen, I am proud to say I have done what is best for myself. There is no need to call myself into question as I have served with the utmost honor in all facets of my life. Sad to demeanor was unwavering in his refusal to give in to Kazuma's crude verbal provocations. At most honor, you say. Do not flatter yourself, fool. You are little more than a dog drooling meagerly at the behest of your master. Whom do you claim to serve with such honor? Is it the Shinsengumi who ordered you to protect her? Or could it be the Aiza? Up to a point, what you suggest may be true. However, from now on, Saito's expression control as he spoke. Exer exercised control as he spoke, as if an intense azure flame was being stroked fervently in his eyes. My actions are of my own. I will see to it that you won't lay a finger on her. That I promise you. Time to shut that insolent mouth of yours for good. In an instant, Saito's hair turned white. Ah, uh, at last. The poor dog has has his bite back. All right, then. I welcome your futile challenge. Feel free to begin however you please. Amagiri, this is between us, stay out of us. To Amagiri, Kazuma's victory may have seen like a foregone conclusion. So Amagiri put up a little resistance and scoffed as he leaned his back against the wall. Yukimura, I ask you to stand back as well. Everything will be okay. This man will do neither of us harm. Now, step back. I had to believe in Saito. I had to. So I did as he requested. And I rested my back tensely against the wall. Then Saito and she did the sword. And their battle began. Battle, 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 battle. Am I still There we go. Saito. Kicked at the ground, hoping to land a critical blow upon Kazuma's exposed neck. <coughs> Kazuma effortlessly smacked at Saito's blade to parry the strike, and the two swords were fiercely locked. However, <coughs> Saito, it seemed, was stronger, was the stronger of the two. The blade trembled in Kazuma's hands, and he persisted by hoping to push Saito back. By then, however, Saito had released the tension and a two-step back. Kazuma and Saito stood at odds with one another. To Kazuma's surprise, Saito unsheathed the second sword and lunged at him from the side profile. <coughs> Kazuma raised his sword to deflect the blow, but Saito edged him in speed by a fraction of a second. 
Every moment mattered and Saito aimed a precise strike to knock Kazuma's sword out from his hand. Oh. Uh, I will best it in a, in a battle of strength. I, I lost to this fake? How? How could you have this arm? This can't be happening! Kazuma shrieked wildly in disbelief and he scurried a little distance over where his sword had fallen. Then, Saito stabbed the tip of the blade in Kazuma's hand as it reached frantically for the sword's hilt, and I heard an eerie crunch as Saito dug the tip deeper into the flesh. Bastard, you insolent bastards! Honor! Drops of crimson blood stained the castle's floor. Thick streams began to tickle in the shape of a rat. Kazuma's face scourged as he, as he grabbed a hold of Saito's blade and pulled it recklessly from his maimed hand. Because of her gender powers, Kazuma's hand was sure to heal at any moment, but... Honore. You worthless impudent soul. First you fill in my presence which you felt, and then you spill my precious blood. Hatred seethed behind Kazuma's lucid eyes, his composure waning steadily as he barked at Saito. Killing you is simply not enough. I will peel the flesh from your bones and torture you in ways more than you can imagine. There will be nothing left for you to fight. I flinched when Kazuma began screeching at the top of his lungs. It was fear reincarnating. <sighs> he went fully demon. Then Kazuma began to transform into a true demon with golden eyes and stark white hair. It was deity-like, an unimaginable sight. No. No human. No human was ever bore witness to my true form. Consider yourself fortunate, you filthy worms. All of a sudden, Kazuma's composure was restored. And when he spoke, his voice echoed like a trampled bell, resonating in a low tone, fell deeply in my chest. Saito assumed his offense stance and leaped from the from the ground to rush at Kazuma, but something confounding had happened. No. What the? Kazuma, who only moments beforehand was standing right in front of Saito, vanished without a trace. Or did he? Rather, Kazuma had achieved superhuman speed, but accelerating his movement beyond what was what my eyes were able to follow. I sure to think that Kazuma was capable of if he were to shift his focus from dodging to attacking. Just as I had been contemplating the worst, a blinding flash cut through the air. As my vision was restored, my fears had been realized. <coughs> Blood spurted from the fl fresh wound in Saito's chest. Saito! I had no time to react, let alone to see what happened. I hadn't seen where the source of his wounds came from. But then all of a sudden another bloody gash appeared on Saito's arm. Thick dulges of blood trickled from Saito's exposed flesh, gathering into a pool underneath his drenched body. <coughs> Saito began to cough blood violently from his mouth. Although his fury powers have normally healed the lacerates shortly after they had been inflicted. Shit. Kazuma was ruthless. He swung again and again and again from the shadows, giving Saito no chance to defend himself. <laughs> you are no match for me. Oh, this is a massacre. Tell me, has your courage left you quickly? You had vowed before I'll present that your victory was assured thanks to the powers of the Water of Life. What a shameful display. 
collect yourself at once, or you will suffer from how much blood you've lost. I want to squant you like the pathetic that you are. Even with his enhanced strength and speed, Saito proved to be little match against Kazuma's current state. The Grand Hall, once immaculate and lavish, had now been covered with gruesome splattering of Saito's blood. No, it was a traumatizing sight, and I couldn't help but cover my eyes in horror. Saito's legs wobbled underneath him as he struggled to endure the grueling pain. It was a pain that I could not begin to fathom. <coughs> <coughs> Saito coughed violently once more, in an attempt to support his body, which was under the verge of collapse. He struck his sword in the ground. What's the matter? You can't even stand up anymore. Kazuma walked behind Saito and grabbed him by his blood soaked hair. Forcing him to look up. Tell me again what you said. How I wouldn't lay a finger on her. How you'd shut my mouth. Were you so confident, so bold? Now, look at you. Is this what you want? Where did all that talk about volition and choosing your path go? Not so easy after all, is it? Saito drew haggard breaths, and but his eyes were fixed right in Kazuma's seeing glare. But. I'm a man of great generosity. If you grovel and beg for my forgiveness, I may consider executing you here and now. Mm. Let's see. First, Why don't you get down on your knees, rub your forehead against the floor like the ill-mannered swine you are, and apologize for your behavior? To help with that? Huh? Come again, I didn't hear you. The only orders I need are my own. Never do anything unless I will it. Unless I know it's true to my heart. An unexpected answer at Kazuma, whose eyes twitched in response. And then. Kazuma began viciously beating side of set into the blood stained floor, viciously like a tamad. Won't follow any orders unless you will it, so is that so? You disgusting, arrogant piece of shit rat. How dare you speak to me so boorishly? Then Kazuma stopped his foot upon the head of Saito. Stomped the foot upon the head of Saito as he waited bitterly. You need to learn some manners and some respect, bow before your master. Makes you think that you obeying me is a choice when you are nothing but a fake. Stop! I couldn't stop my body from shaking as I witnessed Kazuma brutally attacking Saito. Stop! Refusing to watch any longer, I reached my hand for the Kadachi when... Huh? Oh? Amagari brushed off his shoulder and quietly approached Kazuma before throwing a fist at him. Why? So insightly to watch a warrior humiliated like that. This sick behavior is unbefitting of a man, less for so for a demon. That's the only reason. Amagari then looked over at Saito, who was lying in a shallow pool of his own blood. Saito! Saito, grab your sword! 
Shizu was even stuck at this. If you still got the water of life flowing through your veins, you should be fine for a minute or two, even if you're in rough shape right now. Saito squirmed for a brief moment, and he slowly tried raising himself up. An ominous shadow slided closely behind Tamagari. Tamagari <laughs> will never forgive you. Tamagari, I will never. <laughs> And thinkable that you would ever consider betraying me, even worse because it aids this fake. Kazuma snuck up on Amagri and struck him from behind, causing Amagri to kneel over the floor in pain. You're horrible! Wasn't Amagri one of his friends? Kazuma had no visible reaction to my outburst. His aura had changed from earlier. All of the Indentions from earlier had dis dissipated and he felt silent. Kazuma's appearance became ghastly, and then all of it was flipped on its head. The glow of his golden demonic eyes shined above Saito, who was mustered enough strength to stand. Saito! S stay back, Yukimura! Don't come any closer. I bit my lips and I stepped back as I was told. I wanted nothing more than to fight alongside him, but I had to accept the truth that doing so would only s serve as a burden to him. So I was in a bit of a condemn condundrum. Kazuma and Saito glared at one another, and the air around us was thick with elect elect electrifying tension. For Saito, timing was everything. All it took was one crucial swing and victory was his. My knees shook as the tension reached its peak. Kazuma, assuming his battle ready stance, had broken from his stoic gaze into a malicious smirk, and then. <coughs> the wind pushes back my hair from the force of Kazuma's swing, which Saito had thankfully dodged. However, Kazuma had anticipated Saito evading his strike, and the demon spun his body around and swung the blade with all of his might at Saito. Saito! Saito had been flung against the wall, kicked up like a cloud of dust as he landed. A cough, a coughing fit followed soon after, but Saito raised himself back up like there was nothing. Kazuma, however, gave Saito no chance to get himself and kicked him to the ground to lunge for Saito. This is a slaughter, straight up slaughter. <laughs> Just allow your little insect. Can't find an opening. Saito weaved around Kazuma, trying to hit the Kazuma from all angles, but Kazuma parried each strike without exercising any effort. The metallic hiss of blades clashing string my ears, and I watched Saito struggle to find an opportunity to strike as Kazuma easily neutralized each attack. Our chances of victory dwindled at each moment. I nervously wrapped my fingers around my Kodachi. All I needed is in a second. I was under the delusion that I could cause any harm to Kazuma, but if I could successfully distract him, then maybe it would be enough for Saito to get the better of him. I took a deep breath, clenching my fist but... Oi, oi, Saito! What are you doing? Hey, Saito, what the hell is going on? Oh, looking a little rusted. Did you forget how to fight since we've been gone? Hey, I thought we had a rule that you gotta watch your back when you're in the middle of a duel, remember? I think the ruler went, uh... Never fight alone! Nagara... Nagakura Harada Heisuke! Each of them were thoroughly covered with thick layers of blood, sweat and dust, the result I imagined of their hard-fought battles. I ah, sorry to keep you waiting. Let's get this over, shall we? Right. Alright then. Here we go! Heisuke leaped for the floor, facing towards Kazuma with her zeal of the wild animal. What's the meaning of this, you bastards? Before Kazuma had the chance to finish his thought. Jay fighting alongside you guys really takes me back to the Kyoto days. <laughs> Nagakura darted behind Kazuma and put all of his weight into swinging his sword against Kazuma's exposed back. 
Goddamn fools! As I turned around and aimed to aim a retaliation swing at Naga Nagakura. Sakura, which one? Oh, you're claiming a fool? I play them is over. I'm sending you to the grave once and for all. <laughs> Next came Harada rapidly changing, charging forward with the spear, which was aimed right at Kazuma's heart. Saito, Alright! Now's your chance, Saito! Time to show everyone what that sword of yours can do! I know! Saito seized his sword, and he hoped. He hopped in front of where Kazuma had been standing. Suddenly all was still. A suffocating tension gripped everyone in the hall, just then. Oh. Yeah. This is an epic end scene. I love it. A flickering sheen followed the path of Saito's polished sword, moving faster than the blink of an eye. By the time I had realized what had happened, a gaping wound was cut across Kazuma's abdomen. Saito stood tall, his blade unblemished by Kazuma's blood. He had performed a perfect eye eye, to the point that his blade was seemed to everyone invisible. Was Saito really able to land a perfect strike on Kazuma? For whatever reason, time was moving excruciating slow, and a silent tension was pre meted in the air. And then. <coughs> the blood curling shriek bellowed through the hall. Kazuma fell to the ground, still as a rock. Did we do it? Everyone's fatigue was starting to set, doubtly so for Nagakura, who spared no moment dropping to his knees. Saito, on the other hand, stood still with his sword firmly in grasp, and he walked towards Kazuma. Kazuma's body had returned to its original form as Saito sounded quietly towards the fallen demon. It was Amagari who reached the body before Saito did. Amagari crouched down, inspecting Kazuma's bloody body to verify whether or not he'd truly been killed. And then... Amagari stood up, and he shook his head silently. The swing... Saito. The swing was something to behold. You have improved, Saito. Saito nodded stately in return. There is something I must tell you. What would that be? Kodo was close to discovering a breakthrough with the water of life in an experiment on these lands. His hope has been to find an antidote to ease the furious symptoms and prolong the life of the inflicted. Supposedly over in Mutsu is an oasis containing pure water which cures the water of life's dire effect. Should your journey lead you to discover this oasis, the chances of extending your life increases greatly. Well, sort of. Sufficient to say it will not wipe away all of the effects, but it might make life a little bit easier. Well, why are you telling me this? Because I have never seen a truer samurai. It would be a shame to let you go into the afterlife because of some damn poison. The war is not ending anytime soon. Wave for the north, out beyond Mutsu. There is a lot of blood being spilled out there. As far as the Satsuma are concerned, I bet they're getting their revenge on the Tok Takugoya clan for what happened in Sekigahara. Everyone got a bone to pick. It is the way of the world, they say. In 100, or even 200 years from now, what a tragedy it would be if Aizu were to be in the same position as the Satsuma and the Chosu are today, wouldn't you say? 
次の争いを埋まるためにはどうすればいいか。So I want you to consider your position carefully. As in, think about your role in ending all of this violence, this turmoil in the future. o n a j i c h i m u h a r a k a a g a n i k s h i m i a i k i d u t s k e a n a i t a m e n i w a d o s r e b a i k a How are you going to stop all of your countrymen tearing each other apart to end their hatred, their suffering? Bushino Buto Yujiwa. Hoko Tomeruto Kakuno Deskara. The kanji of a warrior means to stop one's arm. A m a g a r i s eyes were thin and relaxed. And his lips formed a peaceful smile. But without another word, Amagri left us. After a conversation, each of us scattered throughout the castle's corridors, realizing releasing Aizu, Aizu soldiers who had been captured by the demons before we left the dome. On our way out, we were welcomed by a serene and clear sky. My skin felt pleasantly cool in the fresh air. Saito, are you okay? How are you feeling in the sun? This is nothing. How about you, Seisuke? Eh, well, nothing to worry about if I walk in the shade. I see. Ah, what a bright sky. Ah, take care of the demons, which means all we gotta deal with is humans from now on, huh? Man, you really got me thinking. What good could any of us really do to stop all the war and bloodshed from happening? Ah, just give me the rest, man. The answer to that question is probably too much for a little brain to compute. What the hell are you saying? My brain is fine. Thank you very much. And furthermore, it's my job to ask. A way to stop the blood and warshed. Uh, the war and bloodshed, huh? Well, you can't get anything done on your own, can't you? So you have to amass a lot of power. You gotta be so powerful that all your enemies say, Look, there is no way I'm gonna win against those guys, and then boom, no one would mess with us. Man, you really got a thick skull, don't ya? You really think the world's that simple, huh? Guess what? It's not. What? Watch your mouth, Nagukura jokingly wrapped his arm around Heiske's neck and dug his knuckles into the Heiske skull. Well, whatever the case, the war's kicked off. So you know what? Sasa to Shirokuro Tsukechimatekara Kanga Yose. Which means we've got some work to do, so we need to get over there and help our boys. You're right. Sonja ore. Well, I need to meet back with Hijikata, so I think this is where I'll have to say goodbye. How much I've got left in me? I couldn't tell you. But I made it this far, so I'd be a fool to stop believing. Oh, be Right on, be careful. <laughs> Just letting you know, if you die in some dumb, hilarious way, I'm telling everyone until death takes me too. Take care, Heisuke. Oh, yeah. See you later, guys. Heisuke bowed curtly and sprinted down the mountain path. His wave and smile sparkled behind the horizon. Well, time for us to go now, too. Gotta brace ourselves for the war front. Right. But man, who would have thought that Saito go off and do his own thing away from Ijikata? You two are inseparable. You're like a shadow. Our last, our last exchange was a civil one. We came to a、um, mutual understanding. Ah,、uh, what? So I got into a brawl with Kondo and making a big scene before leaving the Shinsegumi, and you got off scot free? Rub it in my face, why don't you, huh? 
Nagaruka chuckled, gleeful yet Saito, taking pleasure in his playful banter with a white smile. But good for you, man. After all that worrying about having nowhere to go, you've done ahead. You've gone ahead and chosen who's the boss, right? But he didn't choose anyone as his boss. Harada flashed a smug grin at Saito. Uh, what are you implying? What? what do we have here? Is that Saito flashing? Say, who are you really? And what have you done with the real Saito? After becoming flustered by Nagarkuma town, Saito quietly creeped his hand towards the reach of his sword, sitting on his tight grip. Hey, what you doing? You don't have to reach your sword every time you're feeling good. <laughs> It gets a little hard to tell if you're being serious or not, <laughs> the more you do it, so cut it out. Alright, as much as I enjoy spending time with all of you, we really should be going. Yeah, although uh, I still hope that one day all of this fighting will just stop. There's gotta be someone. For now, we all have to settle for giving this fight everything we've got. You two take care, huh? Uh, if you make it out there on the other side, uh, let's grab a bottle of sake, shall we? Of course. Please be safe, you guys. Farewell. Eventually, two of them disappeared in the distance. Just like when we saw them off in Edo, the back of Nagakura and Harada became smaller, shrinking into the horizon to wherever their path was taking them. <coughs> Saito, are you okay? Hey, why don't we take a minute to rest here? The sun's out after all. But uh, you've just fought in a battle for your life. For once, take some time to think for yourself. Very well, I'll do as you suggest. Saito found a shady spot underneath the lush tree. Uh, I had long held the belief that emotions were nothing more than a distraction. Something that hindered one's ability to make a split second decision. I grew afraid that I would never be able to fight alongside any of those men again. I know. Similar to the battle of the Tobafushimi, we were left with the difficult task of bidding our dear friends farewell. These days will never leave me. Neither the moment spent in Kyoto nor our triumph today. No matter how much time passes from this very moment, these days will be burned in my mind for eternity. Same here, Saito. I'd be lying if I'd say I didn't sadden me to think that I may never see everyone from the Shinsengumi again, but it was inevitable that all of our paths would diverge someday. What mattered most was that the futures were determined by our own will. will. Our only choice was to live honestly and with conviction. There was no chance to look back or falter, or give in to the urge to let everyone else become consumed by our doubts. We must be strong. Final Chapter Hajime Saito Saito and I found ourselves in the land of the Northeast, known as Ezo, or Izu. War continued to ravage the life scattered across the land. A stretch of blood was thick in the air. June 18th, June 1869. Only when the Shogun had offered his terms of unconditional surrender did the bloodshed cease. Once the chaos had subsided, word reaches of Nagara Nagakura's return to Edo. 
Given his unrelenting dedication to the art of the sword, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that he'd spent every day since arriving in Ida owning a skill. Harada, who had originally travelled besides Nagakura during the war, supposedly left the country, making his way to a faraway place known as the Manchuria. For some reason, the image of Harada gallivating on top of a large stallion across the meadow came to mind. <laughs> Okita, who had been fighting his illness in Ida, never recovered from disease, then passed away. Ichikata, who travels took him to, from Sei Sendai to Edzo, fought bravely in resistance to the Imperial Army until his dying breath in the Battle of Hakodate, a port town that had been opened to foreign influence after the passing of the Great Treaty, later flourished from the sudden influx of trade and commerce. Heisuke had never had, Heisuke had heard gave his life fighting alongside Ichikata. Heisuke had accomplished what he'd hoped for. His loyalty to Jikata gave him the opportunity to witness how the myth of the Shinsigami ended. Oh, I'm getting sad now. Soma ended up surrendering himself to the Imperial Army at last, as the last standing chief of the Shinsigami. As for Nomura, we had discovered that he met his end in the Battle of Miyakuma Bay. As a punishment for putting up resistance to the Imperial Army, the Aizu Domain had their territories revoked and they moved to Tonami in the far north. Fragile temperatures made Tonami a wasteland, the dry cracked earth made trees and found a rare sight. The Aizu were subject to a plight unlike anything they'd seen, left to survive in the hardest of conditions. One day out of the blue a message from Saito came from Aizu. Foresight who came from the Aizu. Although I hadn't seen the most colorful of proposals, they invited Saito to live with them in amnesty. Saito, of course, accepted. Naturally, it meant that I was moving to Tonomiya too alongside Saito. And after several months. Where is Saito? I should have came back inside of our home by now. But he was nowhere to be found. If I remember, he dressed lightly as well, it may be better for me to search for him. I wrapped myself with a thick coat and made my way through a blanket of fresh snow through a th before I found Saito. Hoping he hadn't frozen to death, I hollered him out. Saito! However, Saito showed no reaction, he continued to stare vacantly into the distance. Was it because I was far away? I raised my knees high. And I took large steps through the thick wash of snow, slowly making my way to Saito. Saito, what are you doing here? Look at yourself, you hardly have anything warm on. Saito, however, continued to ignore me. Saito, why don't you answer me? You can hear me, can't you? He was only arm's length away from me, and still refused to turn around. Saito, what's gotten over you? I stomped around his side and took him and looked him in the eye. But, I merely averted, but he merely averted his case. What's going on? After stopping to think for a second, I finally thought of the reason why he may have been ignoring me. Hajime! There! Can you answer me now? After calling him by his first name, the glimmering of his blue eyes finally came to view. You have seemed to have forgotten your promise to refer to me by my other name. Well, um... Sorry, force of habit. I've been calling you Saito for so long, I couldn't help it. Anyways, what are you doing out here? You must be freezing. I had guessed that if I were to wait here, eventually you would come to looking for me. So you were waiting for me? But if you just had come straight home, you would have found me! I know that, of course. Then why were you waiting here for me? I asked him indignantly, but Hajime hadn't answered me. Did you really leave home without bringing something warmer to wear again? Your shoulders might get cold as ice. Cold has no effect on me. But the temperature is below freezing. Let's hurry home, we can warm our bodies back up. I beckoned Hajime to come with me back to our home, but he was rooted. Wait, if we just wait, we'll see it. See? See what? 
You Ma will see. Just wait a moment longer. Huh? What Saito was referring to was completely beyond me, so I stood next to him, shivering in my cloak. It's coming. His head was turned upwards, and then... Saito is so aromanticus. Small, white flakes of snow began to flutter down lazily from the sky. Oh, snow! Is that what you wanted to show me, Hajime? I, I, I wanted to watch the snow fall with you. After another moment, the white flakes began to descend, great numbers falling calmly on our head. It's beautiful. <sighs> Ever since we had moved to Tonami, snow had become a sight which were very familiar. But even so, watching the snowflakes flow tenderly from above without a sound was a gorgeous infernal experience. Both heavenly and fleeting at once. So mesmerizing it felt as though time were suspended. I knew you would say that. Hajime stared in the sky with me, letting a little murmur slip from out his lips. Even as we entered a new age known as the Meiji era, I did little to halt the tide of strife still festing about. Over 300 domains were scattered throughout our country, once institutions, now history. With that Japan as we knew, it henceforth was born. Daimyos were stripped of their power and property, which also meant no stipends for mercenaries or ronin. In fact, the government began to implement a kind of conscription service similar to the West that encouraged all civilians to serve in one large unified army. Movements to ban the carrying of swords began to gather steams as well, citing the barbar bar 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 barbarism that had plagued the country for so long. Maybe that the time will come soon, a time that when the world will no longer need warriors. <laughs> It doesn't matter how many men seek to change the world. Warriors will always exist. Even if they take away your rights to carry a sword, it doesn't make anyone less of a warrior. As long as your actions... As long as your actions ring true to what your heart tells you, a man is capable of being a warrior. No matter the age or family into which you are born. After drinking the pure water of Matsu and our letter moved to Tonai. <gasps> he drank the water! Hajime had no longer been afflicted by the curse of the bloodlust. However, after harassing his harnessing his fury powers again and again in battle, Hajime's lifespan was shortened. We had no way of knowing how much he had left. Regardless, it gave us the resolve to take on every challenge in life had to offer with us with confidence. Our futures were in our hands, and we looked ahead. At last we could live in peace and harmony. Hajime, let's be together forever. Even when the spring comes, and melts the snow, and the summer after, and the next winter too, forever. Oh. Yes. Hajime's voice trailed off, leaving with the icy wind, as the snowfall became heavily on her shoulder. Cuties. The end. Beautiful. Well, 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 my friends. This concludes the story of Saito. Oh my god, it was exciting. It was actually a really tense uh, story. It was action from the very beginning. To the end. I loved it a lot, guys. Uh, share your opinions with me, guys, down in the comments. I'd like to think, to know what you think about this uh, story. And if you have played any other characters, but I will finish this with Saito. I loved it. It's amazing. I do not want our uh, hero to fall in love with anybody else. For me, this is beautiful. Thank you much for watching, guys. Thank you for following this beautiful story with me. And as always, thank you much for watching. And I will see you in the next beautiful story. Have a great day, everyone.